Ben McKee, Patrick Brown, Go Vols 247, following Tennessee's humongous, ginormous blowout, 65-24 win over UT Martin here on a Saturday afternoon inside Neyland Stadium. Patrick, a whole lot of offense and uh, a lot of guys throwing touchdowns. Yeah, Ten Tennessee had, uh, what, three different guys throw touchdown passes yep. with uh, Princeton Fant. I getting, think five completed passes. <laughs> Princeton Fant getting in on the action with a uh, beautiful uh, touchdown pass to Jalen Hyatt, who remains in fuego, <laughs> uh, has over 380 yards and seven touchdowns in the last six quarters. Um, but, yeah, Tennessee's offense kept doing what it did, and uh, no, no, no hangover for the Vols after that big win against Alabama. Contrary to what some people <laughs> want to say on Twitter, uh, Jalen Hyatt, I told you all last week, uh, he's on the Heisman ballot. And I look, I know it's UT Martin, but I mean, he was tremendous. I mean, the offense was tremendous. They, they did what they do. Uh, the, the only reason it was 7 7 at the beginning is because you had some walk ons and third and, and fourth string players on, on the defensive side of the ball. But uh, I thought it was very impressive. And, and we've kind of talked about it all season long. What makes this group so special is that every week they, they truly treat it the same. And you saw that today with how efficient the offense was. Yeah, Ben, if there was ever a, a hangover game, it was this one, right? You have an FCS team in here. It's noon kickoff. You're just coming off probably your, your program's biggest win in at least 20 years, uh, maybe a little bit more, depending on, on the opinion. But, um, you know, it, it, everything was in place for Tennessee to maybe sleepwalk a little bit, and uh, and that, that didn't happen. This team came out, and it was 21-7 at the end of the first quarter. It was 52-7 uh, at halftime, and uh, Tennessee was able to uh, play the everyone on the roster in the second half, play a lot of freshmen, play a lot of second and third teamers, and, uh, they needed a game like this with what they've been going through, having already played four quote-unquote big games with uh, Kentucky and Georgia coming up next. So uh, they needed a, a drama-free day where uh, a lot of the starters and regulars got maybe a half, if that. Yeah, and on the defensive side of the ball, I, I wouldn't really look into the 24 points uh, too hard. Uh, I, I do think that UT Martin has a really nice FCS offense, and uh, there are a lot of guys in the game today that don't ordinarily play the amount of snaps that, that they typically do in SEC games. So uh, defensively, yeah, okay, 24 points against a UT Martin, maybe not exactly what you want, uh, but a lot of it came in the second half. Uh, and the defense is really banged up right now, especially in the secondary, as <laughs> it is well documented. Yeah, cornerback, obviously, Warren Burrell's out for the season. Tennessee played today without Kamal Had and Christian Charles. Uh, Josh Eiple said after the game that both those guys were – uh, just felt they needed an extra week, maybe get ready for the back half of the season. So they were probably held up for precautionary reasons. Uh, Brandon Turnage, who was playing really well early in the game, hits his head on the the uh, padded walls back here, and, and they held him out the rest of the game. So they pretty much rolled with Deshaun Rucker, who obviously started last week against Alabama, and William Wright, who's a walk-on, um, played most of the snaps. And uh, you're, you're down to your sixth and fifth and sixth and seventh cornerbacks. And um, you know, Tennessee was able to, to get through it, but they need to get some of those guys back. And Based on what Heupel said after the game, they will next week. Yes, it certainly seemed like it was all precautionary why a lot of those guys uh, were held out. The, the number one goal today, and, and you said it earlier, is to, to get out of this game healthy. And, and for the most part, it seems like they did. Elijah Simmons went down due to injury. Uh, we'll, we'll see what comes of that. Taven Jackson got banged yeah, up. It, yeah. it looked like a shoulder. Uh, but theoretically, you're not going to need him this season. Uh, if Tennessee does need him this season, then something else has gone terribly wrong. So, they, they come out healthy, they handled business, they, they didn't fall for the trap. And, and now uh, I, I know that some people aren't very high on Kentucky, but it is a top 25 matchup next night, next Saturday night in Neyland Stadium. Yeah, it'll be a tough game. Kentucky plays really good defense. They'll want to slow the game down, run the football. Uh, Tennessee's run defense has been really good all season. It'll be really tested by uh, Chris Rodriguez and, and that offensive line. And then uh, the secondary will be tested by Will Levis. I know he's a polarizing player, but uh, I don't think in, I don't think Tennessee secondary can take anything for granted against anybody. So. Um, it's a tough game, and Tennessee's going to have to win. Yes, uh, it will. And if you handle business, you're going to Athens the next week, probably playing for a trip to Atlanta because they're going to beat South Carolina, Missouri, and Vanderbilt. So uh, Kentucky, the only game, in my opinion, that feels like a potential slip-up game. We've got plenty of coverage up at Go Vols 247 of Tennessee's dominating win over UT Martin, and we'll have plenty of coverage leading up to next Saturday's game against Kentucky. He's Patrick Brown. I'm Ben McKee.